Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Photoshop. In today's tutorial, we'll see how to turn an image into this vintage look effect that you can see in here using Adobe Photoshop. We are going to create this effect in a non-destructive way using smart objects, which means you can apply the same effect on any other image that you want without having to repeat the whole process again. But before we're gonna start doing that, make sure to subscribe and comment and leave a like. Alright, so let's get to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and open Photoshop and then let's go to File, New. And I will create a new document using 4,500 pixels for the width, 3,000 pixels for the height, and for the resolution, I will put 300 pixels, and I will press OK. All right. Now, the first thing that I will do is to create a solid color as our base. And I will choose this yellowish to orangey color, a little bit vintage like this. I mean this is a fairly easy effect to do uh, but the good thing about this is uh, we're gonna create it as a, as, a, as a photo template so you can use it whenever you want all right so let me delete this layer mask and I will call this base all right now I'm gonna create a new layer on top of this and I will call it image and then I will uh, right click and convert it to smart objects and this is where we're gonna put our image so to enter the smart object you can just double click on it right uh, in here or you can uh, right click and choose this content and this will open it in a, a new tab all right so let's go and open our image so let's choose this one and I will make it bigger to fit our uh, the size of our document just like this and I will put it down all right and we will click on this check mark and then I will close this smart object but I will make sure to press yes to save the changes that we just did we put a new image in here all right next I'm gonna duplicate this image by pressing ctrl command J and then I will call this uh, color because we're gonna use it for the coloring and I will hide this for now and then I will go back to my main image and for this we're gonna apply a lot of adjustments and uh, filter so the first thing that uh, I would apply is uh, a hue and saturation to turn down the saturation so I will go to image adjustment and I would choose hue and saturation and I will put minus 100% in the saturation and I will press ok and delete this layer mask too. All right, next, uh, I want to apply a filter, so I will go to filter, and I will choose filter gallery. All right, in the filter gallery, uh, let me just fit this to the view. Uh, the filter that I want to use is in the distort folder, so just open it and choose the views glow. I mean, for this filter, we're gonna apply it to to make the image a little bit glowy as the vintage uh, images before so in the grayness you can use it or no but I like to add a little bit of uh, gray to the image I mean a little bit of uh, grain I mean not gray to the image as you can see if I put it to 10% it will add a lot of uh, grain so I think 4 or 3 it would work for this uh, resolution and for the glow amount you can either put two or four uh, for me i think maybe two it would be good so let's see yeah i don't like all this uh, whiteness in here so i'm gonna change it to three and the clear amount you can experiment with this you can add how clear your image want it to be for me i would put it to 15 and you can always see the before and after I think I'm gonna put down the glow to 2 and I will press ok 
and you know of course feel free to experiment with this all right next uh, i would go back to filter again and this time i would go to pixelate and i would choose color halfton in here i mean i just want to add uh, that uh, halfton pattern in here for it to look like it was scanned or something so uh, for the radius you can put uh, whatever you want for me i will stick with four or six so let's change it to six and then in the channels in here i mean you might find this by default set to 45 all of them to have it aligned perfectly but for me i like to not to put it like that i just put like some random numbers in here so feel free to experiment with this too and i hope it's okay as you can see now we have our half turn in here uh, but for this one i'm gonna enter to the settings of this uh, uh, filter in here so i'm just gonna double click on these settings in here as you can see in front of it and then i'm gonna change the blending mode let's see the hue what it does and that's too much so i'm gonna change it to soft light so I always work with soft light and then i put down the opacity to 60 or 50 percent so let's put it to like 50 percent and i will press ok as you can see we have just this little details on here it looks like uh, we scan this image to the computer to have it in here all right so the last thing that we're gonna add for this image is to go to filter and we're gonna add a vignette so i would go to lens corrections and in the custom in here uh, I would put the vignette amount to minus 100% to have that vignette in here and the midpoint I would keep it 50 and that would be okay alright so we're done with our filters and adjustments for this now we're gonna apply uh, the textures so let's go and open the first texture which is this one in here this one we're gonna apply it as a layer mask as it said in here and by the way all these textures you're gonna find them down in the link from the description below so you can just follow along so we're gonna start with this first texture in here so i'm just gonna take it and open it in a new tab and then i will go to select and i will choose all to select the whole canvas and after that i'm gonna press ctrl command c or you can just go to edit and choose copy and then close this and this will take you to the other uh, document that we just created and then we're gonna apply a layer mask on this image in here and after that we're gonna press alt or option while we are pressing alt or option we're gonna one click on this layer mask and this will allow us to enter the layer mask in here and uh, because we already copied the texture we can just paste it in here so i'm gonna press ctrl command v and this will paste the, our texture all right, now I'm gonna press Ctrl Command D to deselect, and then I'm gonna press Alt again or Option, and one click on the layer mask, and this will allow me to exit from the layer mask. All right, so this is our first texture in here in the layer mask itself. So let's go ahead and open the second texture or the texture that it will be on top, which is this one. So I'm just gonna take it and drag it directly to our document, and I will one click on this check mark. All right, for this first texture, I'm gonna change the blending mode of it to overlay, and I will put down the opacity quite a bit, like 40%. All right, and then I will go back to my file and open the second texture. And for this one too, I'm gonna change the blending mode of it to overlay, and again, drop down the opacity between 50 or 60%, so I'm gonna choose 60, and I will go and I will go again and open the third texture I'm gonna take it and open it in here and one click on this check mark and uh, for this one because it's black obviously we're gonna change the blending mode to screen or lighten so let's change it to screen and then I will change the blending mode to 80 or 70 percent so let's keep it 80 for now all right next I will go to the four texture that we have in here and open it just like that and one click on this check mark and this one too i'm gonna change it to screen but i will keep the the, the opacity set to 100 for this one 
and then I will go back to our last uh, texture which is this one it's the border one so I'm just gonna take it and open it directly to our image and as you can see this will give it this vintage borders in here so for this one I'm gonna change the blending mode of it to color burn well let me see yeah I think color burn it will work and I really like the grad the grunge that he did in the edges in here all right I think it looks nice now I'm gonna group uh, all these textures together so I'm gonna press shift while I'm selecting the the last texture that we opened and one click on the first texture in here and this will uh, select them all and then I'm gonna press ctrl or command J and I will call this texture all right now we're gonna add uh, some uh, adjustments and some toning to the image all right so the first adjustment that we're gonna add is a level so I'm just gonna go to the levels and the adjustments in here and open it and uh, we're not gonna touch anything in the highlights and shadows but we're gonna use the the black levels down in here so I'm just gonna take these black levels and put them a little bit to the right to add more white as you can see the more I go Far from the black, I will add white. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white in here. And I will do the same for the white to add a little bit of black. Just to give it this really nice fading to the whole image. And that will be all for the levels. Next, I will go back to adjustment. And this time I will choose brightness and contrast. And I want to take down the brightness a little bit. So I'm just gonna put it down to minus 16 or and yeah, yet again you need to experiment with this so let's keep it minus 15 and I will do the same for the contrast so we'll put it way down like minus 30 or 35 and you know while you are doing this you can always look at your image and see what's worked the best something like that I don't I didn't like that uh, white that we had so I think now it looks much more interesting and we can always go back and adjust this if we want. Alright now we'll go back to adjustment and this time I will choose a, a color lockup and in the 3d loot file I will open it and I will choose teal orange plus contrast in here and then I'm gonna put down the opacity like to 20% this will add just a little bit of cyan and teal to our image all right next i will go back to adjustment and i will choose another color lockup and for this one i'm gonna choose candlelight in here dot cube and then i'm gonna drop down the opacity to like 70 or 80 percent so let's keep it 75 and as you can see we have a very interesting sepia kind of uh, look and we're almost done all right, now I'm gonna group all the adjustments together by pressing shift again and one click on the level and press ctrl command G and let's call this adjustment. All right, so the last thing that we are going to do is to use this uh, color layer that we left uh, uh, on top. So I'm just gonna make it visible and then I will uh, change the blending mode of it to color. And I will uh, drop down the opacity quite a bit, so like 30 or 25%, something like that, just to give it this really vintage color look and yet to look a little bit original with the color itself. And that will be all, as you can see, this is our effect. And uh, as I said, the good thing about this, you can use it uh, for any other image that you want. So for example, if I want to use the same effect on another image, I can just double click on this smart object or right click and choose edit content. And then you can just go and open your image, for example, this one or this one. So let's go with this one and just open it in here. Maybe you resize it to your liking it. And just close this and make sure to press yes to save and wait for it to save 
and there you go you have the same effects in here applied on another image and uh, of course you can make the size wherever you want uh, for your photo template to be and this is our effect all right so i hope that you enjoy and you like this uh, quick and easy tutorial and it was a little bit helpful for you if you try this make sure to let me know on instagram facebook wherever and don't forget to subscribe and comment and leave a like and have a nice day thank you for watching